Hey gang, thank you for joining me today. My name's Dan, and this is Dan's Art Adventure number 26. I can't believe it, it's been two months nearly since I did my last broadcast. I have been busy, and uh, I'm gonna take a few minutes today to show you exactly busy doing what. Um, the last time I gave an update on this project was about two months ago, and we are nearly finished. Oh. <laughs> Ask me if I'm ready to be done. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. This job has, has been an extraordinary adventure. Um, it's pushed me uh, more. No, it's given me opportunity to do more artistic exploration and experimentation than Maybe anything in my life. Uh, lit, uh, okay. I've been doing, I've been calling it a mural. That's a bit of an understatement, as you'll see. It's uh, several murals for a church in Wake Forest, North Carolina. The church is called Living Word Family Church. And I like these people. Evidently, they're given to big projects. <laughs> One of which is this. Um, they had a more than a six-figure budget set aside. Now, I, did, I didn't get all that, but I got a fair, fair part of it. I've been working on this project since September 13th. So in two weeks, it'll be nine months. Nine months of about 25 hours a week to figure that out. Um, that's part of the reason I'm ready to be done. So ironically, working for a church, this church, is going to end up being, at least up to this point, the biggest art project of my life. <laughs> Which is kind of funny, because I, you know, even though I'm a follower of Jesus, I have, I've made a career of avoiding working for churches. <laughs> okay, so, I'll let you, all right, so let me start just giving you a tour. So, I just finished painting here, just painting these uh, toolboxes here about uh, 30 minutes ago. And part of the story here is that we're going to buy, or the church is going to buy a real toolbox, a red toolbox to go right here. Okay? And then these are going to be repainted to look like industrial something stuff. So this, the, 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 idea in this room is this is inside an airplane hangar. Okay, and I'll show you around a little bit more. And uh, not all the painting is mine because I have a young apprentice named Luke, who if you've seen my last broadcast, uh, last two broadcasts ago, I think I, think I, I, think I introduced you to Luke, I'm not sure. And uh, so some of the painting is mine and some of it is my young protege. And uh, it's been a great opportunity for him, I think, I hope, to learn stuff. Um, so this is the last. This is the last room. This is mural number seven or room number seven. And I'm if we if my batteries don't wear out, I'm going to take you around and show you all of them. But before we do, I'll just show you some some of the elements. So years ago, when I was an illustrator, the airbrush, old-fashioned airbrush, was one of my main illustration tools. And frankly. Uh, Airbrush is almost something that has fallen out of my vocabulary, my repertoire, and my skill. Uh, so it's really been fun. We've used airbrush everywhere in this in this project. And that's really been fun. The, the last of which was, for me, was rendering this airplane, clipper, flying cloud, Pan American Air Service. This was called the flying cloud. So what we were, what we were aiming for in this airplane hangar was a vintage, classic feel, not, not a modern. Oh, so the overall theme of all this is, I, I forget, the adventure of life, you know? So let me pick you up real quickly and uh, just point you at some of the other. So this, is, this room is the least um, immersive. So, and that's because we're running out of time and money. And so the church, people have elected to, to finish this room themselves. Uh, so we have, this is going to be a, a barn door 
literally there'll be a sliding rolling barn door in front of this picture so they'll open it to expose the painting close it and so on and I showed you one window a minute ago and uh, here's the other window so we tried to think a lot uh, the, the way kids think you know in all of this stuff and we understand that really all the kids are going to care about more or less is airplanes <laughs> so we, we tried to give them a lot of airplanes there's a wonderful helicopter luke did luke did the 100 percent of the helicopter and the blue angels up there that did, did an excellent job while i'm bragging on luke he, he by default became our animal painter so he he also did he 100 percent did that and he did i just got to show you these canada geese Oh, you've got to see them up close because they, they are really, really, really fine. <laughs> Hello, Fox O Willie. <laughs> I'm glad. So I have to read, go back, read that clip. Where, where's my, uh, where's my uh, chat here? Come, come. Oops, I hit something on my iPad that I didn't mean to. Anyway, those are Luke's Canada geese. Aren't they sweet? All right, so I'm going to leave this room very quickly and take you to the next one, which is right out here. Um, a brick wall that we painted, a window. We put mullions in that window to make it look old-fashioned. That's a plain old metal hollow door that I painted to look like six panel and I painted most of this corner well no Luke actually painted the uh, he painted the stacked up crates so this is kind of fun notice notice the little um, restroom it's in it this is actually a, a bathroom in here <laughs> is that great so um let me give you a little bit of what's what's been going on here um, Again, nine months ago, they gave us they they gave us the themes, you know, airplane hangar, wharf, and so forth. Uh, and I had all these glorious ideas, about half of which we were able to execute in time and under budget. So <laughs> there's a lot of things here that didn't get done or haven't gotten done yet. Um, one of which here is we're going to put. Uh, pylons now i wanted them out here but i guess i think i've been the fire marshal voted me down on that so these are pylons right so they're going to be physical pylons along here there's one detail here that i want to show you that i'm kind of proud of it's this um it's this crane I want you to see that up close <laughs> this is all well plastic and one by two lumber but here's part, part of the fun part of doing stuff like this and by the way this this project correlates to set design more than any other art form theater or tv studio movie studio set design or theater set design that's what this is about and one of the keys to being a good set designer is being able to think outside the box and being able to think creatively and this this is just one of the projects or one of the little pieces that i'm most most tickled with let me show you over here so um this is painted right here this is an this is an already existing knockout in this wall uh, i don't know what it's called but you know the wall is flat and it has a square piece that comes out and goes in. So we had to do something with it. So we turned it into a crane. And this is real metal. It's made to, to go in the corners of drywall. Does that ring a bell? It's so thin that I actually cut it with scissors and glued it with hot glue. But I spray painted it, you know, kind of lightly with uh, black spray paint to give it that metallic look. But anyway, that's 
when it comes to set design, thinking outside the box is the key, and this is a good example of that, and this is one that I'm particularly proud of. Now, we, we walked past, forgive me for spinning you around, but um, there's this great big rock, stone, so <laughs> I look back at this stuff now, it's like, dang, it seems like years ago I painted that, but it wasn't years, I promise. And here's a climbing wall. The reason it's a big um, rock structure is because it's connected to a cave. And I'll show you the cave in a minute, but I'm getting ahead of myself. All right, so here is more seascape. Um, there's one of Luke's masterpieces, the, uh, the seagull up there by the ceiling. And uh, this, is, this is pretty much all my painting. Although Luke did make the rocks, he, Luke painted the, ro uh, the, the, the rocks that, that are painted, and he made the rocks that are 3D. So those are, those are actually movable seats for children, and I'm talking about the rocks, not the chairs. They're for, they're for people to sit on. All right, what else? Oh, just for fun, um, I was online looking for, you know, we debated again, what kind of ships do we want? What era is this? And, Again, I, I, we, we talked about sailing, you know, pirate ships, sailing ships, modern ships, which are boring as all get out. And finally concluded, again, I want vintage or classic. And I was online searching and searching and had downloaded several images. And all of a sudden, and I forgot this guy's name, so forgive me, but all of a sudden I stumbled on this Danish artist at the turn of the 20th century, 1890 to 1920. One of the things he specialized in was maritime or ship painting. And these are dead steels of, uh, of his ships. And they're just perfect. And they're, that's just exactly, exactly what I was looking for. So that was really fun to get that. And it was fun to do, of course, a little real painting. Now, all of this, as you can probably imagine, I, I, I can't describe the speed <laughs> at which we've been working for, at least me, not Luke too. You know, he's, he's not as old or experienced as I am, so it doesn't go as fast as I do, but I I've been busting gut. I'm painting at 100 miles an hour all the time, all the time for nine months. I'm exhausted. Uh, that sky, you know, was painted in an afternoon. Now that, that paint sky down there was painted in another afternoon. Okay, so I'm going to go back eventually and measure exactly how big all of our artwork is. I, I did a rough estimate, and it's about 7,000 square feet of artwork. All right, this room is kind of fun. This is a nursery, and it's, as you can see, kind of like an aquarium. Either we're in an aquarium or we're in a 10,000 leagues under the sea submarine, one or the other. So we just had all kinds of fun. There's a, I don't know if you can see it, there's a pirate ship in the in the distance here. Oh, one thing about this this particular mural is that much of it is fluorescent. So they are going to install black lights uh, hanging from the ceiling all around here. And th this this room looks absolutely magical with the black lights on. So that was fun. And there's not very much 3D in here. Uh, just the little the round discs. I think you I think you can see here um, that are glued just to give us some um, architectural elements. So again, I mean, just all the, all the math that was done, all the, all the graphic elements to get all those, all that stuff straight, just anyway, <laughs> at 100 miles an hour. All right, let's go now. Not to the cave yet, We're, we'll come back to that. So the, the very last room that we did was the first one I showed you, the airplane hangar. Where we're going right now, through these magical stone doors, is to the outer space room. This was the second to last room that we did. And uh, so I'll just give you a quick spin around, hang on to your hat. So we haven't done anything up there. We're, that is one of the things we're gonna come back and do very simply. But we did, the focal point was that wall. Hey, uncle, good to see you. And that wall and that wall. So this, this 
will bear a little bit explanation. This, this was fun. And again, this is, in my mind, classic set design art, which is out of the box, creative thinking, make stuff up. Um, I, of course, I got online and I looked at Star Wars, Star Trek, you know, all the galaxy kind of stuff. And um, one of the things I noticed was, especially with Star Wars, was that inside the spaceship had all these irregular, technical, squarish bumps on the walls. And then some of them had, had lights. So what you see up here, those are lights. I don't know if you can tell that or not. There's a, a string of Christmas lights. It goes all along this wall. Um, so that looks cool. These are all food con plastic food containers. Clear plastic, get it? We painted the inside blue, blue and red. Then we mounted, mounted them, spray, sprayed the outside uh, black f first, and then this gray. Again, a lot of, this is commercial spray painter. You know? And then came back with the Dremel tool and scraped off the paint, two layers of paint, so that the light would show through. So that looks pretty cool. But we couldn't do that down here because this big room, as you can imagine, this is their children's church room, which means things like kickball and dodgeball <laughs> get played in this room. <laughs> so pray for me. <laughs> So everything below that line, so I know even that's, of course, still in danger, but everything below that line, this line, is uh, solid wood. And so there's no lights down here. Um, one little funny thing, I don't know if you, let me bring you up close so you can see this. Um, I, as some of you know, I play saxophone, and I had a, a cousin who donated his alto saxophone to me, and I took it to the... Uh, repair shop and they said no it's not worth fixing <laughs> so my cousin Greg <laughs> his, his saxophone <laughs> got cut up into a hundred pieces and got put as little pieces of the spaceship um, I, and I'm not doing a good job of showing you or oh, let, me, let me let me expand out here but the uh, I am quite proud of the uh, the outer space this is all not all, but this is a lot of airbrush, of course, and big airbrush, sprayer, kind of like automotive airbrush kind of stuff I'm talking about. Anyway, they are really pretty. I'm proud of that. And as you can see, we, Luke did most of this one down here. And there's more lights. Um, this wall, so you can see those lights all along there. Let me describe that. So these, we wanted to speed up here. And so these are plastic skids, like for a warehouse, you know, uh, forklift skids. These are skids <laughs> nailed and glued to the wall, screwed and glued to the wall. And this is soft pipe insulation. Long story, but we had to calculate, you know, how many light bulbs we had. And we, at once I showed Luke how to do it, <laughs> He did all. He did the really grunt work. <laughs> he he did all that once I showed him how, and so all those lights are poking through that the pipe insulation. All right, so that's the end of uh, outer space room. Oh, there, there's, this is kind of cool when they're blinking. Cool, huh? <laughs> all right, so now we're going to the very first thing that we built or that we painted. And oh, I skipped a little bit, but that's right, we'll come back. So this is the jungle. Fully half of the nine months that we spent on this project, we spent on this jungle. It's 120 feet long. We painted the, the ceiling was the first thing we painted. Then we painted all the walls. And then we finished by painting the floor. And there's a ton, as you can see, there's a ton of three-dimensional stuff here. We just came out that door right there top secret, enter at your own risk. We built all these rocks. They're made out of styrofoam and a product called foam coat, which is a high quality cement. Here's, here's one of my favorite elements, and I showed this to you last time, but this waterfall, 
um, it's plexiglass melted over a camp stove. Uh, oh, and there's, let me take you down here again for a minute. There's a, can you see that? There's a, barely, yeah, there's a, some kind of weird goldfish in there. The big, the big question on this project for a number of weeks was what I'm going to use to make the, the foam at the bottom of the waterfall. And the answer was a little bag of plastic beads at Hobby Lobby, a couple bags of that mixed with epoxy and piled on there. So again, it, 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 it's, it's very cool that the water, the, the epoxy down there looks very water-like, very wet. In fact, it's, it's actually leaking out here onto the floor, as you can see, which is kind of fun. Looking back this way, I'm going to point out one kind of fun little detail. First of all, painted that wall so that it looks like the path continues, right? You can see it actually ends here. And this, this house at the end, uh, at the far side of the lake, is a thermostat. <laughs> okay, so that was kind of fun. And, oh my goodness, just, just, for, I know, forgive me for, I don't know what the word is, complaining or bragging, I don't know which, but just megatons of painting. Oh, and then, and of course, 3D stuff all over the place foliage. We built this tree. We built two big trees. These are climbable. The rocks are climbable, of course. Kids are going to climb those trees and climb those rocks, and they're strong enough. This, uh, the background here is classic Dan Nelson painting landscape, you know, misty mountain, distant waterfalls, lakes, rivers, and so forth. And then just jungle, 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 jungle. Here's Luke did the uh, butterfly and there's a couple life-size ladybugs. There's a ton of things we would like to come back and add to this, to this hallway, but that's going to have to wait. Um, again, there's our big tree, um, striated, you know, rock down there, uh, um, sedimentary rock, and then volcanic rock maybe here. Um, these rocks are are. Beautiful. I got to tell you, I don't know how well you can see them, but standing right here, if I if I saw these out in the woods, I, I wouldn't look twice. They are so real. They, it, it's not until you hit them <laughs> that you find out. Wait, this is hollow. Um, and I'm I am also very very proud of the transition from three-dimensional rocks to two-dimensional rocks. I know that if I didn't tell you that these, that these were painted flat and these are 3D, you basically couldn't tell. I've taken several photographs of this and you absolutely can't tell from a still photograph which, which rocks are 3D and which ones are flat. So that's really, really fun. Then here's the, I mentioned the cave earlier. That's the other end of the cave. And uh, again, more rocks. And again, there's so many details we want to do here, hiding little creatures in the crevices and so on. Um, this is a fun thing. This is a, a bridge. By the way, we painted the carpet here. We had a number of church folks that were quite nervous about this prospect of painting carpet, but it worked very well, as you can see. So um, here's some more classic or vintage Dan Nelson landscape painting, waterfall, rocks foliage, lake, and a bridge, of course. And there's one post there that needs, hasn't stood up to our, that these bridge, this has to be strong enough to hold a kid because a kid is going to stand on there. And they all are, except for one post, that need to come and retrofit that. So there's the, the bridge, kind of fun, and then the water goes under the bridge, of course, and then over the waterfall on this side. And again, more distant mountain vista between the trees. So lots and lots and lots of fun. And bare feet, those are my bare footprints going across the bridge right there. All right, we're nearly finished with the jungle. Here's the jungle ruins. Again, it was a big project and a lot of fun. Again, this is classic set design kind of stuff. This is styrofoam with foam coat concrete on it. And 
moss. We made moss out of coffee grounds, sawdust, real moss, store-bought moss, and all kinds of stuff. So just, just lots of fun, so it's supposed to full, forgive me. Here's our second big tree that probably took me three weeks to build all by myself. Um, this is the entrance. So one of the details we don't have done yet is a big sign welcoming especially newcomers. So this will be the, the entrance that people will get when they're dropping off their children on a Sunday morning to this church. And those are, of course, the kiosks where every kid gets registered. Um, and I know I talked about this in my last broadcast, but always looking for shortcuts, of course. These trees were painted mostly with rollers, uh, four inch rollers. That's how they were all started. And the discovered a quick way to, to paint ferns, uh, tied a string tightly around a roller, paint roller, and just a few touches, bum, 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 and there's a, there's a fern leaf. So we went bananas with ferns down here. It has been quite the adventure. All these rocks are, of course, made out of concrete. Luke did all those rocks. <laughs> I, did the, I did the pillars, he did the rocks. Um, so there's just one more room to show you. I'm sorry, you keep bumping you all over the place. Forgive me while we go backwards through this cave, because I have to open the door backwards. So this is the cave. It's supposed to be lava. There's actually lights inside the lava, but I don't have the remote control. And this is one part that I'm, you know, would really like to come back and fix. So that the color of the lava on the floor would be much more intense. I'm not entirely happy with the lava. The cave looks wonderful, it really does. And it's got, as you can see, gold in it, <laughs> other kinds of jewels, glitter. Uh, so here's the last room. I haven't run out of electricity yet, so I'll keep going. This is Serengeti Desert. No, not desert, Serengeti, you know, safari country. And um, we are going to come back before we finish and create uh, three-dimensional canvas tents hanging here. So we, we painted, all of these tents are painted, but they're going to be added or supplemented by actual three-dimensional, especially up there at the ceiling. So this, and we painted the ceiling in this, not the floor, but we did paint the ceiling. There's Mount Kilimanjaro. Luke did all the animals. Um, I did the safari van, <laughs> ranger, whatever that is. We did a lot of research on these trees, the name of which I'm forgetting at the moment. So this is kind of fun. The, um, let me bring you down to a lower level. The, um, I would say, believable dimensionality of looking through this tent. Oh, I did that monkey. That's the only monkey animal I did, I think. Um, looking through the tent into the landscape beyond and all kinds of little, you know, symbolic things. <laughs> and just crazy stuff, you know. Red check tablecloth, uh, compass, crates. Um, oh, speaking of crates, Luke painted all these cabinets to look like wooden crates. And here's the other um, view through the tent. So that's pretty kind of fun, isn't it? And we're going to add, as I said, we're going to add literal fabric canvas tent on, over on top of this. Um, to make it look more tentish in here. Lots of fun symbols there with a cot and a map. X marks the spot and a lantern. And here's the other Serengeti room. Again, we know all the kids, the little kids will care about is the animals. And I have had the pleasure of watching uh, two, three, and four-year-olds come into this room and they really do squeal with delight. They really do look for all the animals, which is, of course, exactly what we wanted. All right, oops, I have to turn off the lights here before we go. Well, that's it. So seven sections, nine months, 7,000 square feet of, <laughs> of painting. I am ready for a rest. And doggone it, I have missed you guys. I really have. Um, I just... My life has been seriously out of balance for the last nine months. 
I typically work at home trying to get you know wedding paintings finished and then I have to zoom up here and uh, get to work I'm going to turn off the lights here in the in the aquarium room also watched little children the, the day we the week we finish that go into that room just run around and squeal <laughs> that was very fun um, whew, so I have all kinds of ideas of things I'd like to do artistically uh, when this is done and one of the things I want to do of course is start doing more broadcasts I, I'm not promising I'll do a daily thing but I definitely want to be more often I also want to do more music which most of you don't even know anything about my music that's all right they'll come in time uh, but I had to finish this job first and uh, they'll be sending Luke I'll be sending Luke back to repair things and add things <laughs> in the months and years to come <laughs> I tell them I'll be I'll be available to you as a con on a consultant basis but uh, that's about it well thanks gang I didn't see many of your chats for some reason my iPad is not catching all your chats. I'll look forward to read. I will read everyone and respond to them as much as I can. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you 